I have about 20 years of experience in communications, marketing, publishing, from the comic book industry to book publishing, with newspapers, magazines. All of that comes into the experience that I bring into the classroom. I like to say that illustration is just fine art where we're working for a client that needs something and we help visualize that project. Book illustration, publishing children's books, film, uh, television, gaming, uh, all of those things need concept art. We also have equipment that again helps us translate that traditional media into these digital platforms. You may not necessarily be interested in motion graphics, but there may come a time when you're looking for a job where it's going to be in your best interest to understand some of that. You need to understand how can we enhance the work that we're doing digitally. You know, anybody can learn how to draw, but you need to learn how to think. And that's one thing that our university provides a really good opportunity there to be versatile in your skill sets. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Dusty Higgins, and I'm going to do a demonstration here on some of the animation tools that we use in the, uh, at the university. Um, I teach digital arts, illustration, uh, some animation, motion graphics, so I teach uh, kind of all of these uh, different areas that deal with a lot of digital tools that we use. So I'm going to show you guys uh, just a, a model here. This is not a rig that I build, uh, and a lot of times when we're working in animation, you have somebody else that's doing the rigging of the model. Uh, we can kind of move around. This guy's already uh, built, and he's got this skeletal structure in him. I'm going to, uh, you may notice if you look on this menu that there are a ton of tools here. And uh, when we get into a program that does as much as Maya, and Maya is kind of an industry standard for 3D animation, and there is a lot that this needs to do. So a lot of people get overwhelmed uh, at the beginning looking at all the, the stuff that we have access to. Uh, and it takes some time to get used to this program. Uh, so what I've done right now, is I've turned on the controls for this figure so you can see all of the controls that we need just to get this, this guy to move. Um, and I'm gonna show you also some of the other views that we have access to. Uh, because this is going to be really important as we work on this figure and figuring out how they're moving in three-dimensional space here. Um, I noticed uh, Robert was talking uh, a little bit about thumbnails and uh, how we use thumbnails, and I'll just mention I'm not going to use storyboards in here because what I want to show you is just kind of a quick uh, walk cycle, uh, if we can do that in 30 minutes. Um, and uh, normally, if we were doing animation, we would plan out what we're doing using storyboards, which are effectively animation thumbnails, uh, trying to figure out where that character is supposed to be uh, and, and make sure that this is working before we spend all the time, and it does take quite a bit of time, uh, to animate these figures. Now, what I'm going to do here is shrink this down to about 24 seconds. Uh, we're only going to, or not 24 seconds, 24 frames. Uh, because we're only going to animate about one second of this walk cycle. And even then, I'm just going to warn you, I'm probably not going to get through all of this uh, within the time frame that we have. Uh, most animators will spend uh, about a week uh, working on approximately five seconds of animation here. So I'm going to start moving through the tools here and uh, just getting this guy to move around. Uh, and I'm going to start by... Uh, moving the feet here to get this cycle um, working. Uh, cycle through the cameras. I actually want the side view here. It's going to make it easier for me to see. I still need uh, this perspective view, but I also need that side view to get this guy working. And you're going to see me move back and forth uh, between the frames here as I'm trying to figure out this rig uh, and the best way for this movement. So I'm going to uh, the best way to start a walk cycle is actually in the middle of it as that character is stepping forward. And uh, so I've got some basic tools that allow me to move things in position. I can also uh, rotate the foot here. But I've also got these tools that are over here uh, in my channel box that allow me to do, uh, and this is all dependent on specifically the rig that, uh, you know, how they built it. And a rig is effectively the skeletal structure that allows me to move the polygons that the original model was based on. Uh, so I believe this is the, no. Nope. It is 
And these are all different across every single model. So I've got to remind myself, no, it's the toe, sorry. Which model is what? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, a lot of times the, the rig, the person who has built the rig will change the, uh, the naming. There's not always a standard naming uh, for how these things are built. Uh, usually pretty similar, but they're not always uh, precise. So uh, just getting uh, the feet positioned, so this person is stepping forward, and you'll notice I push the hips down. Uh, something, uh, for those of you who are interest interested in animation, uh, to consider, and a lot of times these animators will actually shoot video of the actions so they can really analyze what the figure is doing. But as you're walking, and what I would encourage you to do uh, as you're walking around later on today is really think about what your body is doing there, because as we walk, that hip is going to move uh, slightly forward, and we're actually going to kind of lean in to that step that's happening right there. So we're not just moving the legs and the arms, we're also having to think about uh, the rest of the body. And uh, you know, we also need to offset the shoulder. Your body is constantly trying to balance itself, and we have to think about that in animation. Now, there's two types of movement here in animation, and with the legs, you'll notice I moved just the foot. I grabbed this control here for the foot, and it moved the entire leg uh, just in connection with the foot. That's something called inverse uh, kinematics, and it's, it's the idea of when we are uh, thinking about moving my hand, I'm not thinking about I need to move my shoulder, and I need to move my elbow, and I need to move my wrist to get my hand in that position. I'm just thinking I want my hand to go over here. And that's, that's the theory behind inverse kinematics. We're going to move this object in this place, and the rest of these are going to uh, kind of align to, to match the movement of that. Uh, the other method that we can use in animation is something called forward kinematics, and that is moving each joint individually. So for these arms, if I wanted to apply the movement for that, I would need to grab these and rotate them individually. Uh, inverse kinematics is a much more efficient process, so I'm actually going to do that, but I do want you to see uh, some of the ways that we can move it. And there are certain situations where you might want to use uh, forward kinematics over inverse kinematics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a control on this, uh, uh, this rig. Okay. Yeah, so uh, for this, uh, this is a good question, uh, what software we're using. This is Autodesk Maya. Uh, Autodesk Maya does have student versions uh, so that uh, you can download it and, and use these programs and kind of play around with them. Uh, and the rig that I'm using is a, a long winter rig, which is a subscription service that gives you access to these really good rigs so you're not having to try to build your own or, or find those uh, online, and rigs are all different because you've got different people designing them and they're putting them together in slightly different ways. There's no universal rig structure for these puppets. So some rigs are gonna work better than others, and I, the long winter rigs that I'm using right here are fairly professional. Uh, in terms of other software, uh, there, Blender has some animation functionality to it. If you're going into game design, you might use something like 3ds Max. Um, there's also 2D software available, and, and there's a, a large range that you can pull from in terms of the types of 3D and 2D animation software out there. Uh, I just, I was taught, oh, look at that. I was taught uh, how to use this on Maya, which is uh, generally what you're using in film. And that's uh, just the version that we use at the university as well, uh, so that we're tying it into that, that professional development. Um, notice that, that when I moved it to inverse kinematics, based on the position of that hand, uh, the elbow here is doing some weird stuff. And that's uh, partially just because it's trying, you've got the computer at this point uh, trying to figure out what you're doing. So and I'm also trying to figure out what I'm doing right now. Well, 
If you've ever looked, uh, somebody asked if it, how long it would take to do animation for a full feature film, and, and the answer is a long time. Uh, a lot of times those things are in production for years, uh, and that's with crews of hundreds if not thousands of people working on this thing. If you've ever looked at the credits of an animated film, what you will see is that there are a ton of people, uh, animators, uh, storyboard artists, colorists, uh, lighting people. There, there are people that their entire job is not to do any of this uh, fancy animation stuff, uh, but they're just lighting the scenes. And you can have hundreds of lights in a scene, ambient lights, uh, spotlights. So there's, there's quite a bit of uh, different things that you can do in the animation industry if you uh, don't particularly like this part of the animation. And it can get very tedious. You can see I'm spending a lot of time uh, building these things. So I'm going to uh, not spend a whole lot of time on the fingers, but I do want you to show you uh, how I'm going over here and adjusting the joints of these fingers to uh, make them less stiff as they're sticking out. And I've got to make sure that I've got those selected. Uh, some of these controls the um, colors that they used, and they can control that when they build the rig or really close to the selection color. You know, that, ooh, broke that. Uh, that kind of, it depends on the crew. You know, how, how many people do you have working on this? How much is being spread out? Uh, once you get the model made, it really is a matter of just having the animators go in there and, you know, how complex is the action in that scene? Uh, so, you know, the average might be five seconds a week for a single animator to work on something, but uh, that, that really is very dependent on what they're animating. Some things are going to be easier. And with game design, uh, something to consider is that a lot of the stuff that they're doing, they're, they're building kind of templates for the movement as things are working around. Oh, yeah, uh, the question was uh, how long would it take for um, you to design something complex for the, the game, uh, game animation. So all of these things, it's, it's very dependent on the specific project. So I have not, what you might notice is that at this point I'm still getting the silhouette of this first action. I haven't actually animated anything. I'm just trying to get this character into position. And I'm making little tweaks here as I'm moving things around. That uh, shoulder looks a little weird. So this is uh, something that I've been dealing with with this specific rig, uh, trying to get that to line up. How long have I been working now? Uh, at, at this point, are you talking about like on this particular, at the school? Uh, I've been teaching uh, at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock since 2017. Uh, and I've been teaching uh, illustration, uh, sort of a mix of illustration, uh, just digital graphics and uh, animation related courses. So uh, what I've just done here, uh, we've got the timeline down here. Uh, I've set the, the locations, uh, all of these different positions, uh, x, y coordinates, z coordinates of these objects uh, on specific frames here. And now I'm going to go in and actually, I'm going to go into the middle here. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So we might have just, okay, this will happen, uh, and we're going to start back up here. But Autodesk Maya is, does crash occasionally, and I was concerned that this might happen, but uh, it had been working pretty good for me so far, so uh, we will get back in here. This is, uh, this is uh, kind of a constant issue that students have in the class uh, with this particular program. Now, if you're using something like Photoshop or uh, Illustrator, you'll run into issues where the, um, 
the program is pretty stable. Uh, Maya, unfortunately, with all the stuff that we've got here, uh, does occasionally, I'm opening up these windows again, uh, does occasionally crash on us. And it's unfortunate and, um, that that happens, uh, which is why it's important to save often. And I was just getting to a point where I felt like I had done enough work there to save uh, right when it crashed. Um, but yeah, I, I would normally wouldn't go longer than 15 minutes without saving in this program, uh, specifically because that does happen. And uh, it can be related to a variety of reasons, uh, either related to the, the rig itself, or it can be related to uh, something else uh, system-wide. I'm going to, a lot of times it's, it's either related to the rig or just a bug showed up here. Right, so I'm going to do this a little faster than I did earlier. And I think this time I'll just leave those hands alone just so that we can get a little further on. You can actually see uh, what this guy is going to do when he starts moving in the time frame. Uh, this time I'll go ahead and just use the forward kinematics on the arms so I can really control what's going on there. And then you can see a different, different method here. So I'm just rotating these things. Uh, well, uh, so the question is, is it difficult to make liquid or transparent animations? And uh, it does require some specific skills. So that's, uh, I will say that that is not something that I really uh, specialize in when it comes to animation. That was not one of my uh, interest areas. And there are, again, there are people that will focus entirely on uh, texturing. And texturing is uh, the model itself, you know, figuring out uh, what this looks like. Do we, do we actually have uh, threads that are appearing there? Or, you know, the question related to transparency or, um, uh, you know, is there hair on the figure? Uh, just building hair is, is kind of a specialty within the, the animation industry and making sure that uh, those things look right. So there's, it, this is why you've got such a, a kind of large staff of people that work on these, um, on these projects because there is so much to work with. And, and with that question in mind, uh, looking over here at the tabs that are on the top of the screen here, uh, you've got curves, surface, poly modeling, uh, animation, rigging, we've got all these different tools related uh, to different functions that you use in the program. And that really does uh, kind of give you an idea of how complex uh, everything that's going on in here is. Uh, so yeah, if, if I'm focusing on animation, like I need to be a specialist in the movement of the figures and uh, have the modelers uh, worry about things like uh, the transparency, uh, hair, uh, you know, all these different textures that we can apply to get that sense of realism. And we've gotten to the point in animation, you know, this is not, this is a very cartoonish figure that I'm working with, but uh, we have gotten to a point here where a lot of the uh, animation is much more realistic. Can you make any animation Can I make, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a walk cycle here just because uh, that's kind of a, I shouldn't say relatively simple thing, but it shows a pretty good range of movement. Um, but yeah, uh, with these figures, you can do virtually anything. And then I'll just real quickly kind of show you in terms of what we can do with these figures. You can stretch them out uh, quite a bit. Uh, a lot of figures will actually have a, a function here where you can stretch the figure out. So in terms of the range of what you can do uh, with these animations, it's, it's really a matter of what do you need it to do. Uh, and then if the rig can't handle that, 
uh, then you work with the rig to, to build it to do what you need it to do. Uh, or, or have ideally have the person who is actually supposed to be rigging it uh, do that work. So yeah, you can you can do anything, and there's a lot of a. Uh, I mean, there's there's the mainstream animation that you see, and you'll see like the Disney uh, movies or the Pixar movies where they're doing uh, a lot of this. Uh, it's very narrative animation, but there's actually some really interesting experimental animation out there where people are just thinking about like, what happens when I do this uh, with the movement uh, on this form? So I want to see what this is. That's okay. That's the eye control. I haven't really messed with the head control on this guy, um, but yeah, it, just uh, you know, talking about what you can do with this figure. Uh, so, question about uh, do I just work in 3D modeling or do I do comic book work? Uh, yes, uh, and that's one of the courses that I've taught uh, several times here at the university is sequential media, which is kind of a mix between storyboarding and uh, animation, or I'm sorry, storyboarding and comic books uh, because we're looking at sequential art over time. So, I'm going to test play this and see if this actually moves. Okay. So we're getting the start. Now this is, again, this is a, kind of an early process and <clears throat> what I've done here is I've effectively set the keyframes for these poses and I can go back in and adjust this and I, I would uh, go back and adjust this but I'm trying to uh, get something that is relatively complete uh, here. And uh, again, talking about that analyzing what your body is doing. Uh, when we have the the legs, when we're kind of reaching that foot out to take that step, uh, the body actually moves down a little bit. Uh, so there's a little bit of a bob, and you may not even notice it if you're not uh, really trying to pay attention to what's going on there. But uh, when that happens, and when we're in the middle of a step right here, uh, the base torso of the body moves up. So I'm going to adjust a little bit right here, and get this foot flat on the ground. I don't have to worry about any heel there. And then I'm going to, this foot, at this point, would be kind of up in the air. And this is, uh, again, I'm gonna push it back just a little bit. You know, that foot's maybe dragging as he's lifting it off. And then I think I'm going to just leave the arms here for the moment, and we'll come back to those. Uh, over time, now you may not uh, have a good idea of like, where do I put these keyframes to, to set all these poses? Uh, but over time, you'll either get a sense of that from working on uh, different projects, or this is where we record the action and say to ourselves, okay, this is what's supposed to be happening here. So this foot should be flat. Uh, this foot is coming forward here. I'm gonna move this up and just back a little bit and rotate that foot. Definitely, uh, the question is, would it be easier to draw in 2D? And I think a lot of us are, you know, we start out drawing in 2D. Most of us don't have access to 3D programs for modeling and stuff like this. Um, so you would think that 2D would be easier, but uh, in my experience, it's, if it's not harder, it's definitely more time consuming. Uh, and here, in this 3D model as I'm, as I'm animating it, uh, one of the things that happens is, uh, you know, I, I see that I need to move that arm or that leg, you know, I need to make this little adjustment here. Uh, I can just go back in that rig and move it. But if I am trying to uh, do this by 2D, if I get something off and I realize it later, I have to go back and just redraw that frame. So 2D can be much more difficult uh, just in terms of uh, that planning out process and getting those 
those breakdowns and in-betweens. The other thing that's happening here with the 3D software is I'm going to build uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, effectively keyframes or breakdowns, and then the software is going to fill in the rest of that. Uh, so, you know, as this guy is moving around, you know, we're starting to get that sense of that, that walk cycle here. And uh, one of the things uh, I'll show you that's going on here, um, I'm going to pull up my graph editor uh, and look at that real quick. This is another visual representation of everything that's happening here in the frames. And what this is telling me is uh, I've got a frame here, I've got a frame here, and between here and here, uh, it's going to be adjusting the position or the rotation of that control that's controlling all these polygons here to uh, adjust the movement there. So all of this work, all of the stuff that's happening here, the software is doing it. I'm just building this. And this is uh, kind of a, a reason why you see a lot of people switching to 3D animation. You've seen this, this real rise in it because it's made the, the process of animation much more efficient uh, for these companies. All right, so uh, I've got a little bit more time, so I'll just go in here and, and keep tweaking this animation and making some adjustments here uh, just to clean it up. So, um, do I have a YouTube channel? Uh, I have stuff that's posted on the, the university's YouTube channel. I don't really keep, uh, I, I don't like, uh, at least with my personal work, beyond the work at the university, uh, doing a lot of demos and, and demonstrations. There's plenty of YouTubes out there, uh, channels where people are doing this kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm fine with watching other people and seeing how they're doing that and then uh, focusing on uh, that kind of individual interaction with me and the students in terms of the way that I'm uh, teaching or uh, showing my work. I do have an Instagram uh, page. The Instagram page, like I will show uh, process videos of me as I'm doing uh, individual sketches. Uh, so that, that's where you're going to see the most of kind of my individual uh, artwork being posted. Do I do anything with sound? I, again, when we get into uh, animation, there's a lot of uh, specialty in there, and I would say that sound is something that I can definitely add into projects that I'm working on, but it's not something that I, I focus on. And I started out in this industry uh, of essentially doing illustration and doing uh, graphic novels, uh, and then kind of because of the need in the work that I'm doing, uh, moved into uh, graphic design and uh, motion graphics and then kind of translated into animation as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I really honestly prefer to be sitting there drawing. Uh, that's, that's where I feel more, most comfortable and most at ease and most relaxed uh, as I'm working. Uh, 3D stuff uh, is definitely, when I'm doing animation, um, I, I will do 2D and 3D, but 3D is so much uh, easier. And, and when I say easier, I really just mean like less time consuming uh, than 2D. Uh, 2D just takes a ton of time to develop, uh, and I definitely understand why you see those industries using 3D uh, for, their, for their process. Do I have any other questions related to this? I, you know, again, uh, we go through this at, during the courses so that this doesn't seem overwhelming, but I remember the first time I looked at the Maya interface, and I had been doing digital art for a while at that point, and just went, what is all of this? How do I even navigate through this space? And it, it takes time, but uh, you do start to um, get comfortable with the tools that, that are in here, uh, so that it does feel natural uh, as you're working in there, just like you would pick up a pencil uh, and draw on a page uh, over time you start to understand these tools. So, you know, for example, I had the program crash on me in the middle of this, and I was able to get back pretty much to the point where uh, I thought we would, would end this. I have any other questions? Because I can just keep working on the rig. 
All right, well, I guess you guys are gonna move on to the next demonstration. Everybody have a good afternoon.